Okay. So I need y'all to stop working on the warm up, even if you didn't finish. Got to look up here. You'll have time to finish. Methods. What's up with them? Um, here's an interesting bit of information. Last year and all previous years that I taught this class, we didn't get to array lists until January. So anyway, we're ahead. And I guess last year on the final, people made me really angry by just not knowing what methods were. And so I did a whole thing in my notes last January about, okay, come on, people, you know how to do this. Anyway, I thought, why don't I show it all to you before I get mad at you for blowing it on the final? <laughs> ah. Anyway, I'm not going to get mad at you. Don't, don't try to avoid me being angry with you. I just want you to learn how to program. So, um, so I have to change this. I noticed last December that some of my students That's the context for this, but please pay attention even if you don't feel that you're confused. Um, I'm giving you a brief overview today about where to put methods, and I'm trying to get you more comfortable with what they are. So bottom line, methods are chunks of code, little pieces of code that we write and we use to do things for us. Um, almost anything you can put in a method, you could do without a method, but um, methods break the code up into smaller pieces and make it more convenient sometimes. They can also help us organize our code logically. So um, let's look at the frog class. Um, what do we call this private int location? An instance variable, a variable. The AP classroom, one of the teachers calls it a data member. Whatever, it's a variable. What do I call this? I heard Quincy say it's somebody else. Constructor. Constructors don't have a return type and they say public and it's got the exact same name as the class. What do I call this? It's a method. It's a method. It's a method. So. The top one, variable declarations, attributes, data members, fields, they're all they're called other things or just instance variables, the constructor, and then we have three methods. So the frog has a little bit of everything. Uh, in the frog class, if I wanted to add a new method, I gave you three places. Would I add it at A, B, or C, or all of the above, or some other? Uh, let's, let's get this out of the way or D. So I give you, uh, four choices. I want you as an individual to look up here and think to yourself, where could Mr. Hayes add another method to the frog class? So some of you, I don't see you looking up here. I wonder what you're doing. I don't remember how many of these are valid, but I just saw now. So if we wanted to add a new method that made the frog say ribbit, could we put it at A, folks? Why not? Yeah, you can't put a method inside the constructor. Could we put it at B? How about C? Is B better than C? Or C better than B? How about D? Can we put it at D? Why not? Because the frog class is over right above D and you can't just put a method in space. Good work. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. Yeah, the order doesn't matter. G string could be the first thing above the constructor even. Uh, so only spots B and C would be okay for a new method. Spot A is inside of the constructor. Spot B is outside of the class. So for it to be a method, it has to be inside of a class. Here's a REPL example. I've given you three places where I could add a method. 
I want to, I want to write a method that prints the word, Hey, where should I put it? A, B or C. Don't say it out loud. This one, there's only one answer. That's right. Somebody who hasn't helped yet. Cameron. No, A is inside the main method. So Austin, B, you have to, now we could print A, and maybe that's what you're thinking. We could write system.out.println and put it right at A. But if I wanted you to write a method that prints A, so the method would be public, static, void, print A, that would have to be not in main. Yeah, so I think you were just thinking of printing. Yeah, yeah. No, no, B is in capital M main, but not in small m. Uh, so only B, uh, A is already inside a method, C is not inside of the class. So uh, now, so here, right here, I added the method. This is what I was talking about. Public static void, say hey, and it prints hey. Now, why doesn't my code print hey? What do I do to print hey? Randy. Yeah, I made the method, but nobody's telling the code to run the method. You have to put a say, hey, you have to call the method from inside something that's running. I mean, it could be another method. It could be the constructor. In this case, it's just in main. But this would now, if we ran this code, it would print the word, hey. All right. I got a little practice for you. See if you're paying attention. Go for it. I'm going to pause. Here we go. So take a break from what you're working on. And again, look up here. We'll try putting this right here to see if it blocks fewer things. Um, listen, this is an important thing that I think might have been in a previous unit that I didn't cover. I don't remember, but it's time for you to learn this. Uh, when you send information to a method, what Java does with it is different depending on whether the information you're sending is a primitive variable or an object variable. Primitive is int double Boolean and object data is everything else like string, frog, array list, array. A scanner. So here's the deal, everybody. When you send primitive data to a method, a copy of the data is sent to the method. And if you make any changes over on the other end, it doesn't affect the original because a copy got sent. But if you send an object to a method, uh, a reference to the object is sent. And so any changes do affect the original. So I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, let's look at this. Here we've got integer x is seven, and then I'm sending x over to do it. What does do it do? It adds one to the variable. Now, it'd be easy to think, oh, this is gonna print eight out, right? Because we started with seven, we sent it over to do it, and then we print it, but the, the truth is it's going to print seven because what got sent over to do it was a copy of this X variable. It wasn't, X is unchanged. So we said, do it X, that sends a seven over here. Java adds one to it and then throws it away because this is just a temporary variable that lives only inside do it. And then back here, we're at seven again. So this prints seven. You can't get X over there. You'd have to make the method return a value and then replace X with the return value or something. I, I don't know. Um, this is different though, everybody. Look, why is it different? Because an integer array is not a primitive variable anymore. It, it's, it's next level, right? It's a primitive, primitive variable is just a regular integer, double or a Boolean. Once you make an array, it's not primitive anymore. 
I mean, it contains primitives, but the, it's not primitive anymore. So here we've got an integer array called X and it has seven, eight, nine. And I send it over and here I had to change the method. It's now accepting an integer array. And it, it says, hey, let's change the first item to be one bigger. And now I am trying to print the first item. Instead of getting a seven again, we're going to get an eight. Because when you send it an, a, a non-primitive item over to a method, whatever happens to it in the method is literally affecting the, the, the same, the original. It doesn't matter that this is called X and this is called nums. That might be confusing to you. I could call this down here anything. Uh, it's just, that's what it's called in that context. And up above, it's called something else, but they're both pointing to the same thing. Walker. It's not technically what's called, there's a thing in, in programming called a pointer, and we don't do pointers in Java in this class. Uh, C, uh, the language uses pointers more soon in the process, but uh, I would say what it sends is a reference to X. So, uh, or an alias, and one of the instructors on the AP Classroom calls it an alias or something. I'm like, I, I learned the word alias, but anyway, I, I'm not gonna argue with you know, their instructor, but an alias is like another name for, yeah. Another question. So would it just be primitive variable type? So the X and eight just being copy? Yeah, it makes a copy. Okay. It makes a copy and sends it. And one way to think of it is primitive variables are small. It's just a small, tiny piece of memory. And they're like, you know what? We'll just send a copy. We'll just make a copy of the number seven and send it over. Whereas object data could be a lot bigger. And so I think they're trying to be efficient by saying, uh, I mean, this is, I don't know, my imagination says they probably were thinking, why send an object could be huge. Why send a huge object when you could just send a pointer saying, here's where the object is and go ahead and keep working with the object. So, so uh, anyway, this is how Java was designed. So again, I'm saying it, if you send reference data, a reference or alias to the data is sent. And if you send primitive data, a literal copy of the primitive data is sent. Which is which? This was uh, Cameron's question. Primitive data types that we use in this class are int, double, and Boolean. Notice the small, small d and small b. They're not the types we use, not the types we have to use for uh, array list. Object data types we use are strings, any array, Array list, integer with a capital I, double, capital D, frog, student, rectangle, any custom class that we've ever written. Those are all, they would they would be sending a reference or an alias rather than a copy. Yeah. Are all of those capital? All of the object um, You are able to, in Java, make an, make a class with a small capital letter start, but the, the, the recommended, the preferred way of programming in Java is to make all objects start with a capital letter yeah so you can't count on it forever but in this class i try to do that yes yes even if they contain primitive data all right so then we're going to watch one of the college board videos just for five minutes um and uh um I meant to log in before we got here. Uh, I think I'll stop. Well, I guess I can just let it record how meta. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, in this video, we're yeah. going to look at how formal, primitive, and reference parameters affect the actual parameters. What will we learn? You can define behaviors of an object through non-void methods with parameters. The formal parameter is the parameter in the method declaration. The actual parameter is the parameter in the method call. If those parameters are primitive, they have no effect on each other. If those parameters are reference, changing one could cause a change to the other, depending on what part of it you're changing. When you have a reference parameter, the formal parameter and actual parameter will be aliases, meaning they point to the same object. Let's 
let's look at an example to make that a little clearer. Here's a class logic errors. I think you probably have an idea that there are some problems in this class. It has an increment param method and it has a main method. We want to know what is output when this program is executed. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can determine that. So everybody, it'd be good if you try to come up with your own answer about what's going to get printed. This is a perfect AP multiple choice question. What? There are two print calls, so. So when this code runs, the main method will run. X is 33, the method's called with 33, and then we're printing out X. When the method's called, it's up here, it adds one and it prints it. Except it'll be 34 and then 33. Because it's going to do the top one first. When it calls the method, it, it, it becomes 34, it prints it. But back here, X is still 33. you pause the video. When we run this program, two variables are created, x and a. Let's look at the process. Running this program will run main first. So the first line that we'll execute is x equals 33. We create a variable in memory named x. It has the value 33. Next, we call increment param and pass in the value x. Calling increment param creates a variable a. Passing in X assigns the value of 33 to A. Notice X and A are two totally separate memory locations. So when we go into this method and do A plus plus, A changes to 34, but X remains at 33. When this method continues on and prints A, 34 is displayed in a console window. But then the increment param method is done and we return to main and print X, and X is the value 33. How does this look different if the parameters are referenced instead of primitive? So here we have a class mutable. It has a data member value. You could go back to 5.1 if you need help with data members. It has a constructor. You could go back to 5.2 if you need help with constructors. It has a mutator. Mutators are gone over in 5.5. In this mutator, value is changed by incrementing it by one. And it has an accessor. You could go back to 5.4 if you need some help with accessors. An instance of this class, meaning an object you create with the mutable class, is considered mutable because this class contains a mutator method, a method that can change its instance value. Increment value does that. So let's look at a class permanent change that uses the mutable class. We want to know what is the output when this program is executed. Pause the video and see if you can figure it out. So it'd be great if you would all try to figure this out. Volunteer? Randy? 34. 34. That's what I think, too. No, there's no print up here. So one of these objects created, that's this class, starts with 33. Increment param is called with, with this object. Over here, it's called A but it's pointing at the same thing. Increment values executed, which does this. Now we're back here and it gets get value. So it's 34. Um, so if, if you're doing this kind of thing in a, in a code where 
or like sticking a little method inside of a method. Like, is that what's happening here? Because it's um, value, like... We're calling a method from inside a method, we're, but we didn't stick it inside. Uh, yeah, we're calling a method from a method. So yeah, that's okay. Does the, does the mutable class have to be, like, above it or below it? Or, like, does it matter? Or will it... Will it oh, it can be next way? to it. It Yeah, you know, in REPL, you have, like, the far left side. You can have more than one file. Normally, yeah. we just have main, but you could have mutable, frog. So it'll find it no matter what. It'll find it if it's in the little universe. Okay. Normally on a computer, you'd have them in the same folder, yeah. but uh, on REPL, we have, you see, we're just putting them all in one thing. Yeah. Okay. If you need to refer back to it. Okay. Hopefully you did that. Yeah, we did. Let's see what happens. Main runs first. So we create mutable X equals new mutable 33. That's going to look at the mutable classes data and constructor. So I showed that part here. And so a place in memory named X refers to a mutable object, which has a data member value. And then value will contain 33. primitive value 33. Now we call increment param X. That creates a variable A. A gets whatever value was in X, but X contained a reference. So now A references that same mutable object. This is called aliasing. There's only one mutable object, and X and A both refer to it. That means that in increment param, when we ask value to increase by one, we're increasing the value of whatever, whatever object called increment value. Well, A called increment value, so A's value me member goes up by one, and value changes to 34. However, X was just an alias for that same mutable object. So value in X is also 34 because there was only one mutable object, which means when increment param ends and we return to main and print X's get value, we're going to print 34. Now, as an aside, when you're programming, it's important not to change mutable objects unless the specification requires you to do so in a method. So what should we? That was an interesting point. Um, and I'm gonna work on teaching you this, but let's say you have a method that receives a string array uh, or a bunch of numbers or something. What she just said, is it a little offhand thing? Is it in general, unless you're told to, you're not supposed to change a parameter that gets passed to you. So you don't just like, oh, I'm gonna make them all uppercase or something. You have to try to do things with a copy if, if you're, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get that another time. Um, all right, well, that was good. Um, I think I'm still recording, yep. Uh, so briefly now we have a day 44, method parameter practice Google form. And then we have uh, day 44 method versus main where I have you write a little program that does something in the main method and I have you write it in another method. So you can see how it's different writing something in two different places. And then we have three array list problems uh, which are uh, almost the end of our array list work. By the way, Monday, we're going to do a little more array list stuff, but then we start reviewing for finals and we'll talk more about the final exam on Monday. So let's do the Google form and 